at halftime at the 50th Cotton Bowl, and Texas A&M is two up on Auburn, 15 to 13. Let's take a moment and listen to the Auburn Tiger marching band. most valuable player of the game award. Recently, Brent Musburger was on hand when Chevrolet presented their top honors for the season of 1985. Since the college football season began on CBS Sports in September, our commentators have selected Chevrolet most valuable players in each game. Chevrolet then donates $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of both participating schools for use by qualified students in their chosen academic fields. And annually, Chevrolet selects the offensive and defensive players of the year and the coaches of the year along with CBS Sports. And we're pleased today to be with Mr. Tom Stout, Chevrolet's general marketing manager who will make the presentations to the award winners. Tom? Brent, thank you. It's always a special thrill to honor year-long excellence, both on the playing field and in the coaching ranks. And it's certainly rewarding to honor the coaches whose responsibility it is to develop leadership and excellence in our athletes. Well, Tom, the Division 1A Coach of the Year is Fisher DeBerry of the Air Force Academy. The 47-year-old head coach is only in his second year at Air Force. He led the Falcons to an 11-1 record, their best since 1958, when the team was 9-0-2, as well as a share of the Western Athletic Conference crown, the Academy's first ever. Now, his high-flying Falcons set school records for touchdowns and points scored, and they were one of three Division 1A schools to score at least 21 points in each game that they played this season. Congratulations, Coach DeBerry. You're coming out of a pressure-packed season. The training, guidance, and inspiration you gave your players resulted in their going all out to make this a very memorable year. Well, thank you very much, and I accept this award with sincere appreciation. I just want to take this opportunity to sincerely thank CBS and Chevrolet for their tremendous support to college football. And I accept this honor on behalf of our young men at the academy and our, my fellow assistant coaches uh, for the tremendous job they did during this year. They're the ones that really are deserving of this award. And I just appreciate them giving me the opportunity of pumping up the balls on Thursday afternoon before the game. But it is indeed an honor for everybody here at the United States Air Force Academy. Now it's time for the presentation of the Chevrolet Most Valuable Offensive and Defensive Players of the Year. Yes, Brent. And when you think of all the great performances we've seen all year long, to pick the one offensive and defensive player that stands out among all the others certainly had to be a great challenge. It really was. And our most valuable defensive player of the year is defensive tackle Mike Hammerstein of the University of Michigan. Bo Schembechler calls his 6'4", 250-pound senior from Wapakoneta, Ohio, the best individual pass rusher ever to play for the Wolverines. For the season, Mike had 73 tackles, including 22 tackles for losses while sacking the quarterback nine times. Hammerstein was a consensus All-America, a Lombardi finalist, and one big reason why the Michigan Wolverines gave up only five touchdowns this last year. Mike, you're certainly most deserving of this award. And I should add that this trophy will be inscribed with your name on it and will go on display permanently at the College Football Hall of Fame in Kings Island, Ohio. Thanks. I'd just like to, on behalf of the Michigan team, the defense, thank CBS and Chevrolet for this award. I think it's uh, mainly a reflection of how well our team and especially defense played this year. We, uh, we came to play, we played hard, and we played good. And I'd just also like to thank CBS and Chevrolet for their continuing support in college football. Tom, certainly no surprise about our Offensive Player of the Year. He is running back Bo Jackson from Auburn, and Bo will add this prestigious award to his growing list of honors, which include the 1985 Heisman Trophy and the Walter Camp Outstanding Player of the Year. A consensus All-America, Bo rushed for 1,786 yards and scored 17 touchdowns in 1985. Wow, Bo, you've had an exceptional season and a spectacular career at Auburn. In your leadership, teamwork and outstanding individual performances have inspired teammates and fans alike. Congratulations on a great year, Bo. Thank you very, very much. And I don't think that I could have done this without the help of my teammates. And I would like to give thanks to Chevrolet and CBS for nominating me for this award because there's a whole lot of good people out there that work just as hard as I have. And I'm just fortunate enough to come out on top. 
Well, let me add my congratulations to all the award winners, and Tom, thank you very much for your continuous support of college athletics, plus financial aid to the students through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program. Long ago on the frontier, homeowner's insurance meant knowing the cavalry was close at hand. That kind of protection was hard to beat. It still is. Today, Kemper provides insurance to homeowners, condo owners, and renters with a wide range of money-saving discounts. And you can count on professional service from the independent agents who represent the Kemper Cavalry. To protect your homestead, compare Kemper. You ride with us. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Ford Tech Muscle. For Auburn 15-13. And on the field right now, the Fighting Texas Aggie Band. Let's go down and have a listen. with the Cotton Bowl through so many years. In fact, over at CBS Radio right now, Lindsey Nelson is working on his 26th Cotton Bowl broadcast. So, when it was time for us to take a look back at all the golden memories, there was only man who could do it justice. Just one, Lindsey Nelson. If stadiums could only talk, what memories they could recite of days gone by, yesterday's heroes, Moments won and lost in the sun. This marvelous stadium was first built in 1930 and over the past 50 years has housed one of college football's classic New Year's Day events, the Cotton Bowl. But it was not always the showcase that it is today. The Cotton Bowl Classic was started in 1937 by a Dallas entrepreneur, J. Curtis Sanford. The first Cotton Bowl featured Marquette University versus TCU. Tickets were $2.20, and Curtis Sanford promised each team $10,000. Frank Murray's Marquette squad was one of the nation's best. They were led by All-American Buzz Bubitt, while TCU counted with slinging Sammy Ball. The game was expected to be a high-scoring affair, but neither Ball nor Bubitt were the biggest stars. That honor belonged to Little Dutch Meyer, a third team in and the nephew of TCU head coach Dutch Meyer. The year was 1946. Texas would meet Missouri, and one young Texan would stand tall that day. He could run and kick, throw and catch like none before him. And that afternoon, he would do it all, having a hand in all 40 Texas points. He wore number 33 that day, but forever will be remembered as old number 22, Bobby Lane. As long as people talk about bowl games, forever they will remember the improbable meeting of Tommy Lewis of Alabama and Dickie Magel of Rice. Dickie Magel takes off to the right. Walkers turn the flankers, and that clears Dickie for the outside. Now for the unexpected. From out of nowhere comes Tommy Lewis, and Magel is tipped down. I thought the, the right side of the stadium fell in on me. It was a spontaneous thing. He just saw me running for a touchdown and say, hey, I'm going to get this guy. In the years to come, the memory of the 54 Cotton Bowl would be more bittersweet for one than the other. But like Roy Regals, the names Tommy Lewis and Dickie Magel have a special place in the minds and hearts of college football fans everywhere. The 64 Cotton Bowl would pit the nation's top two teams, Darrell Royal's 10-0 Longhorns and Wayne Harden's 9-1 Midshipmen. In the first five minutes, Texas scored on two TD passes from Duke Carlisle to Phil Harris. After that, the great Texas defense teed off on Heisman Trophy winner Roger Staubach. There was very little doubt 
who was number one. Darrell Royal had his 28-6 victory and the national championship. The 70s would open with Notre Dame versus Texas. With time running out in the fourth period and Texas losing 17-14, Texas found itself with fourth down and two, decision time for Coach Darrell Royal and his quarterback. The game would be decided by this James Street pass to Cotton Fire. And all of a sudden I heard the roar come out of the far stands and I knew then that Spire had made obviously an unbelievable catch, scooping the ball right off the ground in a pass reception that gave Texas four more opportunities to score. It wouldn't take four downs as Billy Dale raced in for the score, clinching the national championship for Darrell Royal Texas Longhorn. In 1971, these two teams would meet again, but this time it would be Notre Dame's turn in the victory circle. Led by quarterback Joe Theismann, Notre Dame would produce 21 points in the first 16 and a half minutes. And Notre Dame would end one of the greatest streaks in college football, Texas's 30-game winning streak with a 24-11 victory. The 70 and 71 games added greatly to the rich history of the Cotton Bowl, for it brought together two schools with outstanding programs and two magnificent coaches and gentlemen. We didn't have even a hint of controversy or disagreement of any kind. And that's the way I like to to, to coach. That's the way I like to play college football. And uh, I'm glad that Aaron and I had our two contests, and I think it came out about right, 50-50. 1979 featured Houston and Notre Dame in a very memorable game. An ice storm hit Dallas that year, and there is only one word to describe the weather, cold. Houston led 34-12 to midway through the fourth quarter. But Joe Montana's passing and scrambling brought the Irish back. And with this two-point conversion to Chris Haynes, the Irish trailed 34 to 28, but Montana wasn't through. With two seconds on the clock, Montana rolled right and unbelievably found Haynes again in the corner of the end zone. The miracle man had knotted the score at 34. And Joe Eunice's kick would secure one of the greatest comebacks ever. And so ended the decade of the 70s. In the 80s at the Cotton Bowl, the parade of stars continued. Pittsburgh Panthers brought in a quarterback named Dan Marino. They played the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University, who featured a running back named Eric Dickerson. And how he could run. And who could forget Georgia's John Lastinger and his dash from 17 yards out into the end zone to defeat 11-0 Texas and deny the national championship to Fred Akers Longhorn. And they gave Vince Dooley a ride off the field. And the little man who won the Heisman Trophy, Doug Flutie, with his magnificent talents, passing and running. If stadiums could only talk, what memories they could recite of days gone by, moments won and lost in the sun. The Cotton Bowl Classic is more than a game, and its rich tradition is more than the victories and defeats. What sets it apart are the people, leaders like Bob Cullum, Felix McKnight, and Field Scoville, players like Tommy Lewis and Dickie Magel, Lane, Walker, Campbell, and Flutie, coaches named Bryant and Bell, Neely and Nealon, Royal and Parsegian. They are the heart and soul. They and thousands of others have embraced this game for one simple reason, their genuine love of college football. And so do you, Curtis Sanford. We salute you for having the vision and courage to bring a football game to the city of Dallas. From Sammy Vaughn to Bo Jackson, it's been a great 50 years. Admiral Cotton Bowl Classic, Texas A&M leading by two points over Auburn. It is 15-13. Hey, the Aggies have had a couple of impressive runners in that backfield. Not only that, they've had a couple of good passes from Murray. These two fellows contributed, of course, Roger Vick and Keith Woodside. But Murray has also passed for 185 yards, and they have almost 300 yards in the first half of this football game. Now, right, here's the Woodside run for the score. How about this lead block you wanted to... Watch Tony, number 25, block Phillips. And Woodside cuts right off of that, right there. That's why that play went for a touchdown. It was 22 yards. Woodside zipping into the end zone for the Aggies. One of their two touchdowns that they scored. And, of course, 
How about the big fella, number 34, Bo Jackson? Well, you're the one that said yesterday if you were coaching, you'd get the ball in his hands on a pass, and that's exactly what happened here on a screen. Now, you watch Wilson, number 75, the left guard also in the lead. He'll get a great block out in front of this. And, of course, when Bo Jackson gets the ball in his hands in the open field, and that's what you need to do, that's what they need to do, no one's going to catch him because of his tremendous speed. All right, and two big developments, of course, in the first half era. The fact that Auburn changed quarterbacks, Texas A&M, well, they changed their field goal specialists. So looking ahead to the second half, what do you foresee? Well, I think we're going to see Jeff Berger, the number two quarterback. He's a 53% passer. But I, if I was Pat Dye, I would go back to what has brought him here, which is the running game, because the more first downs that he can grind out with Bo Jackson and Ware and the rest of them, the less time that Murray and company have to move the football. They are an explosive offensive football team. And that's what I would do if I was Pat Dye. All right, Aaron, you know, in the first half, Jim Nance mentioned in one of his reports that there have been allegations by one Dallas newspaper and a television station about recruiting violations at Texas A&M. I spoke to Jackie Sherrill about that. Does Texas A&M pay its football players to come here and play for Jackie Sherrill? No, they don't. And it's, it's one thing, and it's like we all in this profession. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, I try to explain it, a guy driving down the road, driving 55 miles an hour, uh, but I don't even know who the guy is. I don't know what kind of car he's in, but I'm responsible because he's driving 55. Uh, our profession, uh, which being an athletic director and head coach, uh, there's 300,000, 500,000 people out there. And when somebody says, yes, you know what everybody does 24 hours a day, that's not true. Uh, but yet you're responsible for it, and we take responsibility and full responsibility. Now, there is credibility here. There is credibility academically uh, with our students. There is credibility in things that we're doing with our program. Uh, am I going to sit here and tell you that anything outside uh, it has not been done? I can't say that. Uh, but I will tell you this, that... If there is, then we'll correct it. We'll take measures to prevent it, and we'll go, go on about a business. Hamburger Placement. The 50th Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by Today's Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. The investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. And by Budweiser. Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. 